Ukraine's military struck a base storing Iranian Shahid-type drones Russia uses for daily attacks against Ukraine near the village of Oktyabrsky in Russia's Kranidar Krai, the general staff reported. About 400 attack drones were reportedly stored at the Russian base. According to the statement, the attack was carried out by Ukraine's Navy and units of the Security Service of Ukraine. The subsequent detonation was recorded after the attack, the general staff said. According to the results of objective control, an accurate hit on the target was recorded, the military said, without elaborating on the scale of the damage. The destruction of the Shahid drone storage base will significantly reduce the ability of the Russian occupiers to terrorize civilians in Ukrainian cities and villages, the general staff added. The propeller-driven, satellite-guided Shahid, developed by Shahid Aviation Industries in Iran, is one of Russia's main weapons for deep strikes on Ukrainian cities. Since acquiring the first Shahids from Iran in 2022, Russia has launched more than 8,000 of the explosive drones. According to a tally by Defense News, the Ukrainians have destroyed 91% of all incoming Shahids since March. But 9 out of 100 get through, striking homes and businesses with their 110-pound warheads, maiming and killing indiscriminately. Nearly 600 Ukrainian civilians died and 2,700 were injured in Russian strikes in the three months ending on August 31. Blowing up 400 Shahids should blunt the pace of Russian strikes. Destruction of the storage base of the Shahid will significantly reduce the opportunity of Russian occupiers to terrorize civilian residents of Ukrainian cities and villages, the general staff in Kiev stated. Forbes says that Moscow can always acquire more of the drones from Tehran. It's also producing copies at a factory in Tatarstan in eastern Russia. The Kremlin paid $1.7 billion, partially in gold, to secure the license for local assembly of up to 6,000 shahids. How the Ukrainians struck that drone stash is unclear. The general staff attributed the raid to the Ukrainian military and counterterrorism ministry. Oktyabrsky is just 140 miles from the front line in eastern Ukraine, placing it within range of a wide array of Ukrainian munitions. Ukrainian fighters captured two more Russian servicemen in the Kursk region of Russia, where a military operation has been taking place for almost two months. The captives were brought to the area outside the battle line in an armored car, with their faces covered. Currently, fighting continues in Kursk. Ukraine is keeping up the necessary pressure on Russia on the Kursk front, President Volodymyr Zelensky has said. There was also a separate and long report by the Commander-in-Chief on our frontline actions, on all defensive operations, as well as on the Kursk operation, the fighting in the Kursk region is now in its third month, and we are keeping up the necessary pressure on Russia in this area. Head of Defense Intelligence of Ukraine Kirillo Budinov also delivered a detailed report on the processes taking place within the enemy system and our influence on them. There was also a report by Minister of Defense Rustam Yumirov regarding aspects of our cooperation with partners, Volodymyr Zelensky said. The Kursk offensive, which comes as Ukraine increasingly strikes Moscow's military assets deep inside Russia, has demonstrated Kiev's ability to bring about a new phase of the war in the third year of Russia's brutal all-out invasion. But some analysts warn these audacious tactics, rather than presenting a thorn in the Kremlin's side, only fuel war support in the regions affected. The incursion into Kursk was Kiev's attempt to redress that momentum, drawing Russian forces away from the country's east and boosting morale across Ukraine. It was also meant to show Ukraine's western backers that Russian, red lines, are not backed by action, potentially helping Kiev to receive permission to strike Russian territory with western-made missiles.
Croatian Prime Minister Andrei Plenković and visiting Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky on Wednesday signed an agreement on long-term cooperation and support between the two countries. Croatia is hosting a Balkan Leaders Summit on Ukraine in Dubrovnik. The goal of the meeting is to rally regional support for Ukraine in its fight for freedom, Plenković stated during a government session. This summit follows the Ukraine Southeast Europe summit held in Tirana, Albania, in February, where Zelensky urged greater backing for Ukraine's defense efforts.